Between the many planets in our solar system, Mars is definitely the one we have studied the most, besides our own. Astronomers have been observing it since ancient times, and by the 19th century, we had telescopes powerful enough to begin to see its surface. As soon as we could launch probes into space, Mars was one of the first destinations. With more than 50 missions by various countries over the past century, almost half of them succeeding, the Red Planet is currently home to three active rovers and eight orbiters, all doing important experiments and data gathering to further our understanding of planetary evolution and the solar system as a whole. Of all the science going on on Mars, perhaps the most important is the search for microorganisms, either past or present. Finding life that evolved independently on another planet would rewrite history books and teach us a whole lot about the universe. For that purpose, most rovers and orbiters have been equipped with instruments to detect numerous chemicals that can indicate biological processes. And recently, a weird discovery has left scientists scratching their heads for an explanation. This is the case of Mars's vanishing methane. Methane is a chemical compound consisting of four hydrogen atoms and one carbon atom. It's the simplest of hydrocarbons, organic compounds consisting entirely of hydrogen and carbon. It's present all over Earth's biosphere, from petroleum to the human body. It's also in the atmosphere as a gas, being responsible for 20% of the total radiative forcing from all of the long-lived and globally mixed greenhouse gases. Methane has many uses in industry, as well as fuels since it's the main constituent of natural gas and about 95% of methane in Earth's atmosphere comes from biological processes, so detecting it on another planet could not only be a valuable source of energy and heat for any future colonisation attempt, but also a hint of hidden microbial alien life. That being said, how can we find it? There are many ways scientists can detect chemical elements. They can use specific reactants that only bind to certain molecules. They can study the rate of radioactive decay to determine the atomic number. They can even blast the sample with lasers to read its emission lines. That last one is called spectroscopy, and it's so interesting we already made an entire episode about it. But here's the gist. Molecules and chemical elements absorb and emit light at very specific wavelengths. So by shining lasers through a sample, scientists can see exactly what kinds of elements it contains. Think of it like taking their fingerprints. This type of instrument is exactly what the Curiosity rover used to detect and study the presence of methane on our neighbour planet. The Tunable Laser Spectrometer, or TLS, uses diode lasers to determine the temperature, pressure, velocity and max flux of the gas under observation, allowing for precise measurements. It's part of the larger sample analysis at Mars' system, essentially a portable chemistry lab made up of three different instruments that search for and measure organic chemicals and light elements that are important ingredients potentially associated with life. Curiosity has been looking at Mars's atmosphere for years. Arriving on the Red Planet in August 2012, NASA's Curiosity rover explores Gale Crater, Thought by scientists to be a former lake bed, probably extinct millions of years ago when most of Mars's atmosphere evaporated into space. With 10 instruments, including high-resolution cameras, spectrometers, lasers and even radiation detectors, the rover is capable of running many experiments at once. It can analyse soil samples to look for life, monitor weather for patterns, and measure the type and amount of harmful radiation that reaches the Martian surface from the Sun and space sources. Over the course of its almost seven-year mission at this point, Curiosity has been able to measure seasonal changes in methane concentration in Mars's atmosphere, picking up on warmer months while dialing down on winter. A notable spike in methane levels happened in 2019, right in the middle of Martian summer, solidifying this seasonal pattern. This methane could be generated by reactions between carbon dioxide and hydrogen, by deep magmatic degassing, or by ultraviolet radiation, breaking down other molecules already on the surface such as comet dust falling onto Mars. If buried underground, the gas could be stored in lattice-structured ice formations known as clathrates and released to the atmosphere through cracks in the surface at a much later time. It could also become trapped in pockets of shallow ice, such as seasonal permafrost. On the surface, ultraviolet reactions in the upper atmosphere 
and oxidization reactions in the lower atmosphere would transform methane into carbon dioxide, hydrogen, and water vapor, leading to a lifetime of the molecule of about 300 years. Although it's possible that this methane comes from inorganic sources like water rock chemistry, scientists can't rule out the possibility of biological origins, like thermal degradation of ancient organic matter, or, hopefully, a byproduct of living microbes. However, it might be tricky to pinpoint the gas's exact point of origin, since it would be quickly distributed around the planet by atmospheric circulation, diluting its signal and making it difficult to identify individual sources. What scientists can say for sure is that due to the lifetime of the molecule when considering atmospheric processes, any detections today would imply it has been released relatively recently, but the methane's point of origin isn't the biggest problem of all. Meanwhile, the European Space Agency's ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter, designed to be the gold standard for measuring methane and other gases over the whole planet, couldn't detect almost any higher up in the atmosphere, not even in the summer months. TGO is part of a larger collaborative project between the European Space Agency and the Russian Roscosmos Agency, divided in two missions. The first part, launched in 2016, placed the orbiter into Mars's orbit and carried the Entry, Descent and Landing Demonstrator Module, or EDM, known as Scaparelli. The second part aims to deliver the Rosalind Franklin rover to Mars in 2022. ESA's orbiter has a number of high-sensitivity instruments that use infrared and ultraviolet spectrometers to look at atmospheric components and identify gases from orbit, their concentration, temperature, sources, loss and cycles. Along with methane, the instruments can measure sulphur dioxide, ozone, sulfuric acid, and perform aerosol studies. The orbiter also has a neutron detector that can map hydrogen levels to a maximum depth of one meter beneath the Martian surface, thus revealing the most detailed map ever produced of water ice distribution in the shallow subsurface of Mars. Yet, with all these powerful and precise instruments, it could barely see any methane at all its measurements finding 10 to 100 times less than all previous reported detections, a result far different from the one Curiosity made at the same time. So what exactly is going on? Scientists were quick to come up with hypotheses for this irregularity, chief among them due to the fact that both instruments operate at opposite times ExoMars during the day and Curiosities during the night, that sunlight might be affecting methane concentration on Mars's atmosphere and destroying it close to the surface through some yet unknown method. The Curiosity team then tested this hypothesis by taking daytime methane measurements, and the gas indeed dissipated during the day. However, NASA is still trying to sort out why that happens. Methane released from Mars's craters should remain stable enough and accumulate in the atmosphere enough for detection by ESA's orbiter, so scientists are now looking into what process might be capable of destroying the methane before its supposed 300-year lifetime. Until then, Mars's vanishing methane will remain an enigma. Mars has been the source of many discoveries and mysteries throughout the centuries. From the first observation of Martian channels in the 19th century, to the finding of a subsurface lake below the southern polar ice cap in 2018. So it's safe to say, this isn't the first and it won't be the last time the red planet surprises us. Mars also isn't the only alien place in the solar system where we can find methane. Titan, the largest moon of Saturn, and the second largest natural satellite in the solar system, has methane clouds, rivers and rain, making the molecule work on its environment much like water on Earth, albeit at a lower temperature. The only known moon with a significant atmosphere, and the only nitrogen-rich, dense atmosphere in the solar system, aside from Earth's, with even similar pressure, the surest place to find alien life close to home might not be Mars, but Titan instead. But that's a story for another day. Thank you for joining us this week in Access Astronomy. We hope to see you here next week as we continue to explore our strange and vast universe.